Dragons, well, they call to us. They speak directly to our soul and they awaken past life memories of a time when dragons walk the earth. They infiltrate our dreams and they show up in the most unexpected of ways. Now, if you're being drawn to work with dragon energy and you're not sure how to start, then this video is just for you. So hi, I'm Dawn and on my channel I like to explore metaphysical and esoteric topics to help you to live a more intuitive and a magical life. And today it's about dragons and I've been connecting with dragon energy and working with them for oh, over 15 years. So if you're feeling the urge to connect or you've had a dragon reach out to you, don't worry, you're not crazy and you're not alone. Millions of people across the globe believe and work with them on a regular basis basis. So in this video I'm going to be sharing my thoughts and my experiences of working with the draconic consciousness. Now dragons are amongst the most popular and enduring of the world's mythological creatures. Dragon tales are known in many cultures from the Americas to Europe and from India to China. They have a long and rich history in many forms and continue to populate our books, our films, our television shows and our imagination. Now, throughout history, many cultures both loved and feared dragons. There are hundreds of stories of heroes who conquer the evil dragons, as well as tales of dragons that helped humanity in their time of need. But are they just myths of old ages? Well, for me, a dragon is elemental energy, and by elemental, I mean fire, water, earth, and air. They're the element essence embodied in dragon form. They're sentient beings that can carry with them the wisdom of the universe. They're interdimensional with a different frequency and vibration from our, our own human one. And this is why they're not readily seen within our earthly five senses. We, have, we often have to tune into their frequency to perceive them. Now, of course, that's my interpretation of dragon energy, and you'll find a ton of people with different experiences and different beliefs about them. We're all different with unique life experiences, belief systems, and mental models, which our dragon connection is filtered through. So I know this might seem frustrating when you're looking to get the truth, the definitive guide to something, but in my experience, truth is individual. So I always say to my students, find your own truth. Take what resonates and always stay open to new experiences, new information and possibilities so that you can grow and learn along the way, even if that means that your truth changes. So I invite you to do the same. Listen to my take on dragons and how I've worked with them and use this to create your understanding. Now, people work with dragons for a variety of reasons. So for some, it's a matter of protection. For others, they wish to access healing or wisdom. Maybe it's support or help with manifestation and transformation, particularly in relation to magical practice. And there are some people who dedicate their entire practice to a dragon or to the dragon realm or have one as a guide. There really is just not one way at all. Now, people will experience dragon energy in different ways. And I guess that's a combination of the individual dragon energy and the person themselves. Like human beings, dragons come in all shapes, sizes, colors, and personalities. So I'm gonna be sharing how I've experienced them and what I've learned about them over the time that I've been working with them. So how did I start working out with dragons? Well, very early on in my psychic development, a dragon kind of tapped me on the shoulder and it was a bit of a shock to see one in my mind's eye during my meditation. I was actually in Wales in the UK and that makes perfect sense that the dragon energy was so present there, given that their national flag is a red dragon and they have so much legend and mythology about them. Now, luckily, or by design, the dragon appeared months after I got over the shock of meeting a spirit guide in meditation for the first time. All of this psychic and spirit stuff was really new to me, and um, it was like I was learning to walk all over again. There was so much I didn't know. So I was getting used to strange things happening in my meditations, but I really wasn't quite prepared for a dragon showing up. Now, as a clairvoyant, I do rather rely on my seeing senses. So I did see him. He was red and he was yellow and rather large. And I now know he was a fire dragon, but I didn't when he first appeared. 
Now, if I can describe the energy as feeling very thick and it had an electric aspect to it, I could feel it on my skin. And as I remember it now, I'm getting goosebumps again because I got the goosies big time on his first visit. It was quite a funny meditation as I couldn't see the, I could see the dragon's mouth moving, but no sound was coming out. So I really got the sense that he was talking to me, but I couldn't hear him. And he was pretty displeased with that and kind of just vanished from my meditation. Now I did try a couple of times that day to reconnect because I was intrigued but he didn't come back um, for a number of months later actually. But since then I do work with the dragons that are manifestations of the elements. So as I said before, fire, earth, water and air dragons. However, some people work with galactic dragons which are said to live on other star systems and planets and they're said to carry the wisdom of their star races. Other people work with chaos dragons, storm dragons, ancestor dragons, and the list goes on. But I really can't say much about them because they're not the types of dragons that I've, I've worked with. So I'm going to be focusing this video on the four elemental dragons that I'm most familiar with. Now, I don't have one dragon that I work with. I work with each of the elements separately and for different reasons. Now, some people do have a guardian dragon ally, like a guardian angel or spirit guide, and they stay with them and, and work to support the person. Maybe one day a dragon guide will reveal themselves to me, but not yet. Now, if you have a dragon guide that works ex exclusively with you, I'd love to hear about your experiences. So drop those in the comments below. I hear they only choose to work exclusively with people who have a pure heart. So maybe I've got a bit of more shadow work to do before that happens. Now, there are many reasons why we might want to work with dragons. So they possess ancient knowledge and wisdom. And some say dragons have existed long before the time of humans and even before angels and demons. Now, in my experience, they're wise beings, but sometimes they can speak in riddles, making you really work hard for the knowledge that they have. It rather feels like going on a quest. They also have ancient knowledge, and if you do persevere and develop your relationship with them, they might just share that with you. Now, dragons are also mighty with the strength beyond our imagination. So working with a dragon in your magical practice adds to the power that's beyond our human capability. They also represent balance, light and dark, and they're seen to be the stabilizing force for the universe. So there are lots of reasons why somebody would want to work with um, dragon and draconic energy. So let me introduce you to the four elemental draconic consciousness that I work with. Let's start with fire. A fire dragon helps us with transformation and manifestation. A very famous fire dragon from books and movies is Folks Dumbledore's Phoenix, which is a type of fire dragon. Just as the mythology tells us the phoenix rises from the ashes, becoming a magnificent symbol of transformation and change. Now, fire dragons are most often combinations of red, oranges and yellows. They breathe fire, obviously, and some have wings, whilst others don't. They're most comfortable in mountainous regions, particularly volcanoes, and they tend to be a little bit more kind of snake-like, similar to a Chinese dragon, more sinewy. Now, I've heard some really interesting stories of members of the fire service seeing dragons in the fire, and some even telling of miraculous uh, rescues that defy explanation. Now, fire dragons are also very protective, so having one um, as an ally in your corner comes in very useful. They can deflect psychic attack and they can clear away stale and stuck energy that might be hanging around in your own energy field. Um, but they can also clear a room of stale stuck energy as well. And some even suggest that you can ask them to visit war zones to help clear and neutralize the energy that's created in these places. Now, I've been told that fire dragons are good for helping with spirit attachment removal. Now, I've never had to ask a dragon to help me with that work um, as of yet, but it's nice to know that I've got one in my back pocket just in case. Now, when it comes to manifestation, fire dragons work with our lower chakras to help us to identify what is wanted and to bring it about into, into physical form, into our reality. They're also great to call on when we need a boost of energy or when we literally need a fire in our belly. Now, you might find fire dragons as being quite passionate about their beliefs and a little prone to quick temper. So do tread carefully if you want to work with a fire dragon. 
you'll also want to make sure that you're ready for the changes and the transformation that they might just bring about in your life. It's like that old saying, be careful what you ask for. As dragons can bring about change so quickly, you want to be super clear on what you're looking to manifest. Now I connect with fire dragons through a candle flame or fire scrying, which I guess makes perfect sense given that they're fire dragons. Now earth dragons are less quick tempered. In fact, they're pretty stable and very patient, but they can be rather rigid and a little bit stubborn in my experience. They can help us with grounding and, and protection as well. Particularly if you're looking to ward something, you might call upon an earth dragon and ask them to help you with this. They're the ones most likely to be the guardians of ancient sites and have been seen in folklore and the movies as the dragon guarding the treasure. Now, earth dragons protect the earth's energetic meridian system and that exists just below the surface of the earth and many people know these as ley lines and in Chinese culture these energetic bands are called dragon lines. Now these dragons are a little bit wary of mankind as they have and continue to witness the destruction of the land so you should always come to an earth dragon with a very open heart and you should already be environmentally aware and doing your part. Now typically earth dragons are um, earthy colours as you would expect, so browns and greens and some yellows mixed in. And I've worked with um, a copper earth uh, dragon and also a black dragon who was an earth dragon as well. Out of all the dragon clans I feel most connected to the earth dragons and I'm an earth sign after all. Now sometimes when I've been working with a fire dragon I ask for earth dragon energy to help me to ground. Now when an earth dragon is present I feel heavy and anchored to the earth as well as being well kind of wrapped in immense wings. The earth dragons I've worked with have have all had wings although I've never seen them fly. They've always been fully on the ground with all four feet and they, they look a little bit stouter and stockier than the fire dragons. Now I connect with earth dragons through meditation and I always find them in a cave. Sometimes our conversations happen entirely within the cave and sometimes they emerge out into the landscape. I've found them quite slow moving, slow in their speech and responses to my questions. They are very thoughtful and ponderous in how they interact with me. I also connect with them directly on a dragon line in the landscape as well. I'll go to a place that I know a dragon line runs through and I'll sit on top of it to connect. If I can't access the physical one in the landscape, I'll travel there in my mind. So next to water dragons, now they're guardians of the sea, oceans, lakes and rivers. They live in deep underwater caves and they don't have wings, preferring to swim deep within large bodies of water. I like to think that the Loch Ness Monster in Scotland, UK, is a water dragon, as well as its Canadian co cousin Okopogo. Now I've heard of smaller water dragons living in streams and rivers as well, although I have never met one yet. Now typically they're shades of blues, aqua, greens and white. And some water dragons are ice dragons, although technically still a water dragon. Now water dragons can help us with healing by assisting us to clear our emotional body. They're really good at healing heart hurts and very helpful if you want to restore cycles and rhythms in our life. They'll help us to let go of unhealthy patterns and behaviours. Now I haven't worked much with water dragons I must confess but the times that I have uh, connected with them I've done this through water scrying. So sometimes indoors in my scrying bowl and sometimes out outdoors by a fast flowing river stream or of course the ocean. I like to get in a relaxed state and gaze into the body of water asking for the water dragon to be present and once I've made the connection I can then work with it. And finally let's talk about air dragons. Well they're known to be a little bit fickle, they're masters of the sky and they can ma manipulate the air to facilitate their flight. Now they are super intelligent elementals, being that air is associated with the mind and mental faculty. 
they can literally see right through lies and don't suffer fools lightly. They're helpful if we're feeling anxious, low in spirit or a little bit depressed depressed or if we need help with changing negative thinking. Now air dragons can also help us to speak our truth so if you've lost your voice you can ask an air dra dragon to assist you. Now air dragons do breathe fire and of course all have wings um, and they're a combination of blues and yellows but I've also seen purple and magenta coloured air dragons as well. Now, if I'm working indoors, I'll burn incense to evoke an air dragon. Outdoors, it would be any windy place like the top of a hill or a bluff. So let's talk about working with dragon elementals. Now, as I mentioned in an earlier video about working with goddess energy, which I'll link below, I choose not to invoke the goddess, but I evoke it. Evoke is to have to ask the energy to be present and connect and work with it where invoke is to draw it inside and to merge and this isn't something personally I wish to do with spirit with goddesses or dragons for that matter but others do. So in my dragon practice I invite them to be present. Like with any energy you should be respectful and dragons are no different. I wouldn't recommend commanding them or summoning them. In my experience, they don't take very well to that approach. Now you might find dragons a little bit brusque in the way that they communicate with you. They can get frustrated if they think that you're not understanding them or what they want you to do. So remember, they are ancient beings, but um, are not human and never have been. So we sometimes baffle them. Well, let me own that. I've sometimes baffled them to the point that I think I can hear their eyeballs rolling in their head. Now dragons are pure of heart and really expect that of the humans that they work with and they can see through lies and deceit even only if we're lying to ourselves or deceiving ourselves. Now not only do we want to approach our first communication with a dragon from a place of openness and a pure heart we need to maintain this as we build our relationship with them. Trust is very important to them so following through on promises not being fickle and walking the world honestly, honestly and with integrity will go a long way to solidifying your relationship. Now I found that being upfront about what you're looking to achieve and why are really important aspects of dragon magic. So if you're creating a spell to manifest something that you desire and want to increase the power with dragon energy, you should tell them what you're hoping to achieve and that then they can decide if this is something that they're willing to support or help you with or not. Sometimes they don't particularly if it goes against their sense of honour and what they believe is right because they really are honourable beings. Now I hope that you found this video helpful in your work with dragon energy or maybe even inspired to reach out and make a connection with them. If you're already working with dragon energy and draconic consciousness please do share your experiences in the comments below and if you want to learn about goddess energy check out my video on goddesses. Thanks for watching. Ta-ta for now.